All right, so, so we'll get the radius. Radius formula, always the same. We measure the distance to the origin. Then we measure out the angle. Okay, so we do tan of the opposite over the adjacent. geometry approach to this. All right, let's sort of imagine what this would be uh, if we asked a bunch of grade nine students to plot this point and measure this angle. All right, so we uh, plot something at a half, and we make it go up really tall So we see that this angle is pretty big. Right? Um, I think that here we might have pi by 6. Right? But this is looking like half of an equilateral triangle now. Okay, so I think we get pi by 3 here, which gives us the angle we were looking for. Uh, if we measure out this length, we get 1. Okay, so that's another way of, of calculating this coordinate is you, you say, ah, that looks like a special triangle. Ah. Okay, okay. Thoughts, comments there before we go on? So I want to talk a little bit about um, sort of how to take whole equations now, right? Here we've been, we've been talking about points, and now we're going to talk about writing things um, from Cartesian into polar.
x plus y equals 1. Nice straight line in the plane. Let's graph it. So this is in x, y coordinates. Okay. And now we want to come up with a polar equation that represents this line. Okay. So we're standing here at the origin. Okay. We see a straight line out in front of us. And boop, 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 boop. We want to measure the distance to the straight line. Okay. So imagine measuring the distance to the wall while you're rotating. Okay. So we're standing here and rotating. Okay. Before we even convert to the true religion of polar coordinates, can we notice a place where our equation should be undefined? Our polar equation will have some kind of singularity or some kind of undefined point. Right. Can we think of where that point should be before we even begin? Uh, yeah, I see a couple of hands going up. Uh, yeah, all, all the way back here, yeah? Yeah, sure, yeah, with the Timmy's. Um, third coordinate. Hmm? The third coordinate. Uh, third coordinate, or third quadrant? Yeah. <coughs> One, two, three. That's okay, we can have negative values there. That's cool. Right? Well, when we're over here, yeah. we'll just output negative numbers. It'll put us back there. Okay? Where? Okay. So I, I do this exercise because it's funny, but it also really helps. Imagine you're looking at this wall, and you're measuring your distance to that wall. Okay? At what point does the distance become undefined? Yeah, when you're looking parallel to the wall. When I'm looking this way, hello, guy at the back, hello, that right? There's no more, there's no more distance to that wall over there, right? Pointing fundamentally away from that wall. Okay. So our equation, whatever it is, is going to have some kind of singular behavior parallel to this line. What are those angles? What angle is parallel to this line? Yeah, yeah. No, 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 just hang there. Okay. Uh, what angle is parallel to x plus y equals 1? Yeah? Uh, I have a question. Is sure. that, are you starting the angle still from like the x? Yeah, starting from x axis. So is it uh, three pi by four? Yeah, three pi by four. Okay, what's this guy? Negative pi by four. Okay, so I just want to point out that there will be our equation will have some kind of weird behavior at those points. This is not part of like formally solving the question, but it gives us something to check. Okay? Once we get our final answer, we want to check that it does not work at 3 pi by 4 and negative pi by 4. So what we do to convert between Cartesian equations and polar equations okay, 
I'm going to substitute in those values for x and y. Now we want to divide both sides by cos plus sine. And this is where we have to be careful. We can divide by zero. Right? If this, if this stuff in brackets is zero, then the division will blow up. So we can do this division, except when that thing is not equal to zero. What value can I plug in to make this equal to zero? Um, all right, if I plug in those numbers, right, cos negative pi by 4 is 1 over root 2, sine negative pi by 4 is negative 1 over root 2. So we get 1 over root 2 minus 1 over root 2 gives me 0. In that case, my thing would blow up. All right, let's check it out. Let's see that that's the sort of the, the picture we want. Okay, so I want to show you on Desmos how to graph things in polar coordinates. So if you've got your laptop out, uh, close the porn tab, open the Desmos tab. <laughs> Uh, and then, uh, then go to the top right corner, and you can switch grids. Yeah, so you can switch between polar and Cartesian. You'll go over to uh, polar. observation about this thing not being defined in the third quadrant, right? If we go into the third quadrant uh, between pi and 3 pi by 2, notice that it still works, right? It's still the stuff over here, right? In that third quadrant, both of these functions will be negative, right? Cos will be negative, sine will be negative. So it'll output negative numbers, and our radius will go up to here. Very neat. All right, so let's take a 10 minute break there. Well, if you've got any questions, please come, up, come on up and ask. Um, yeah, so come back at 2.10 for more fuller action.